Hello, welcome back to Tarot by Andy. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedlies. Hello, happy Sunday, you guys. I hope you're doing well. I figured I would get on quickly and do a spread before I head on out to put some plants in the ground. Uh, I would like to find out and do some, throw some cards out on how, how much does Harry feel as far as trauma and, um, you know, because he's saying he's, he's filled with trauma from his childhood. So I want to find out exactly how much does he actually truly feel. Uh, so this is a general vibrational reading. And so let's see, you know, uh, if it comes out, there's not much there. We know it's just the manipulation, right? Or, you know, he could be feeling it now because she triggered those feelings and amplified it and highlighted it. But I want to find out what is truly there. What is truly there at his core without the manipulation. So let's see if the cards can give me that. Here we go. How much does he truly feel in terms of childhood trauma? Spirit guides and angels, please be clear. How much childhood trauma does Harry feel? Give me the childhood trauma. Childhood trauma. Here we go. So that is the first card. Here we go. So for starters, we have here the Empress in reverse. So that is uh, the wound of losing his mother. Boom. Right there. So based on that, I'm going to say the fact this was my very first pull is it's probably he is suffering from borderline personality disorder abandonment issues. He's got abandonment issues. I'm just going to say it. I've been feeling it for, for a, a long, long time, a very long time. So yeah, I think I called it right. <clears throat> Here we go. And the fact that she left the home, she was no longer there, no longer the stability with the mother in the picture, with Diana in the picture. The next pull, hard work pays off card, um, working towards earth energy. And uh, that's basically what she was doing at the time of her death. She was away. She was doing her thing. She was, uh, you know, gaining experience uh, with the earth energy thing. And that was dating. She was dating. So she was gaining some experience with dating, basically, in the earth energy. And she was hoping that something would pay off. And he realizes that. He realizes that she was, she was dating. And that's how I feel about that card. Uh, and things did kind of slow down. After she passed, time really slowed down. Um, his mind probably slowed down quite a bit. The energy became, you know, something he had to overcome with the Eight of Wands in reverse. So that's just an energy he has to overcome. He had to overcome this, um, this lack of fulfillment and he had to overcome it by taking some action and doing something to help himself, but he wasn't able to do it. It was almost like he was frozen. He was frozen in fear, frozen in anxiety, uh, frozen in his own mind over the loss. Uh, wasn't able to take any moves, make any moves. And yeah, he didn't want to talk about it. He shut down communication, totally shut down the ace of swords. So yeah, uh, there was, there was, he didn't want to talk about her death. Uh, he wanted to be very silent about it, it uh, pretend it didn't happen. He was sort of frozen uh, from the situation. And then we have here that it was a cause and effect um, that possibly because she didn't have, um, she was the people she was with, um, the circumstances that it was justice uh, was cause and effect. You know, she was out in the world got in a car with the drunk behind the wheel, uh, as he claims, paparazzi. Um, and it was the balancing of the scale. You know, it's not a fair situation. So it would be, you know, so he's not thinking, oh, it wasn't fair. He's thinking more in terms of cause and effect from not from the lack of security and being out uh, of the royal family on her own, dating. So he might be thinking and kind of blaming um, the dating situation quite possibly. And the outcome here, it affected the happy family. It became an ending to the family, uh, the closure to the family. It was a finish line with the 10. 10 a finish line, and it was very emotional. Yeah. Under the surface, 
the, it's a, the triangulation in reverse, the three of swords in reverse. Uh, threes is creation. Uh, creation with the communication and intellect being sword. So the communication between the two parents and himself went into reverse because she's no longer in the picture and they can no longer try and there was that probably a triangulation situation going on when she was alive and that because I always refer to this as my trying it's a lot of triangulation and communication there and that went into reverse so it, it it eliminated that that issue and the three is for creation and so they weren't able to mend any issues they weren't able to fix anything nothing could be created at this point because it's a three in reverse and the communication in reverse so yeah it it, it just stopped any ability to mend any problems communication problems that were going on and i'm going to get another one here we have here the marriage the marriage um, alliance here because and it affected the marriage alliance, the it affected um, the institution, the firm, because that is an institutional card right there, and it affected uh, the fact that they had been married, and um, yeah, so it's looking like he's not very wounded, you guys. His whole wound is based on losing his mother. That's the wound he has. Um, so now I need to find out what was it about he feels that they failed him after her death. Um, so it's not popping up that it was his upbringing. It was just the fact that she was out of the picture. So I think it really boils back down to what I've been saying is that she's highlighting and, and amplifying uh, other issues that really were very minor and really not bothering him whatsoever. She just kind of formulated that in his brain and drip fed him to believe it. But really, his only pain is losing his mother, which happens to quite a few people. Um, so he's not alone in that. Here we go. This one here wanted to pop out. I'm going to take it. So abundance in reverse. So it, was, it, it took his feelings of having an abundant life, having her, and it flipped it. And that is why. That is, the, that is really why. He no longer felt he had an abundant life when mom was out of the picture. Under the surface, because she took the wrong path, being in Paris, dating the person she was, he felt that that was just the wrong drive, the wrong road, the wrong car ride, um, you know. And he went started going down the wrong path as well, um, out of um, his temperament, his personality, uh, becoming difficult, acting up. He took a lot of wrong moves. He got busted constantly. They were constantly cleaning up his mess. So this is going down the wrong path when the star is in reverse. So he started becoming very difficult for the family. And then in the center of the situation, it removed a lot of challenges, apparently, uh, in terms of feeling abundant. Um, he didn't feel like probably... With the five, fives is conflicts. So he must have had some kind of conflicts with her as well, probably about his behavior. She saw some of their warning signs in him, and he no longer could conflict about it with her because she was worried about him. She did say that he did, she, if there's, between the two sons, he was the one that she was worried about. So I think it removes th that whole dynamic of her coaching him, being that lifestyle coach to him, keeping him out of trouble. With her out of the picture, it removed that conflict of her keeping him out of trouble. So now he went down the wrong path because she is not available to tell him, no, look, you're, going, you're, doing, you're making a wrong move here. So she really was uh, the one to parent him. And so he lost that primary parent um, and that, that good coaching that he needed. He needed the conflict for her to tell him no and to go down the right path so in order for him to feel abundant. Um, and once she's out, then all of a sudden his, you know, there's not that mom telling me no, so I'm gonna do what I want. So then he became in trouble and he was in the tabloids for doing stupid stuff. That's how I'm seeing it. That's how I'm feeling it. Um, let's get some more on um, his conflicts, his conflicts with outer, his conflicts with outer. 
So he's really sound and pet, you know, just like a spoiled brat, really. Here we go. And yeah, the loyalty. He had the loyalty. He got the loyalty from his mother. That loyalty, that help. He felt like he could trust her like nobody else. He had her full loyalty. She had his full loyalty. Um, under the surface, what do I have here? And the money. He got her money. He did get her money. And it probably that security. There's that earthbound security. Fish is earthbound. It's also money. And then we also have here, and she made him happy. She made his days bright. She gave him a sense of joy. So really, it's a parental thing, you guys. It's not, it's, it's, it's regarding her death. I don't think it has a lot to do with uh, how everyone else slacked off. Uh, it's the fact that he didn't have her mentoring him. Uh, she was his favorite mentor. So that's just how I see it. But she challenged, she did challenge him. She challenged him. She challenged his behavior. She challenged him and she set him straight. Every time he would go, go left and she wanted him going right, she would say, no, Harry, and she'd pull him right. And that, that wasn't there for him to keep him on the right path um, is how this is reading. So she kept him on the right path. And when she was gone, Harry acted up. And they weren't able to get him back in line because he felt so much loyalty from her and he trusted her the most. So that's where all this wounding is. It's not, it's not any, anything else. That's really what it is. Um, let's get some more cards on how Markle is drip feeding him. How is Markle drip feeding Harry? Let's get some drip feeding energy. Drip feeding energy or any manipulation. How often? What does she do? Drip feeding Harry. Drip feeding Harry. Drip feeding information. It's a, form of, it's a form of brainwashing. All you have to do is keep telling someone enough every single day. Eventually they believe it. You tell it enough time, that lie becomes a truth. So show me some drip feeding. Show me some drip feeding. Okay, I will take that clump right there. Yeah, this one's out. I'm going to take that one first. So first we have here the death card in reverse. Inability to change. So she tells him you have an inability to change. Uh, and uh, the lovers in reverse. We have here the empress in reverse. Your mother passed away. You loved her. And you just want fun, sexy times. Uh, that's exactly what he did. And you have an inability to change, Harry. Uh, you are insecure. You have addiction issues as a result. You don't look inward. And it happened very quickly. She plays it on his insecurities. You're very self-defensive, Harry, and you went down the wrong path. The star in reverse. Um, you went down the wrong path. Yeah, so she's playing up what he did wrong after her death. After her death, she's tapping into um, all the errors he made, and she's making him feel more insecure, more or less uh, uh, of a royal. You, don't re you really don't want to be a royal. You did all of this, Harry. Uh, you did it because you really don't want to be there, Harry. Um, and, um, you know, they did corrective measures here, but the bottom line is, Harry, you don't want to be there. Not the fact that he didn't have his mother uh, correcting him. She played up on the fact that he screwed up so often and got busted and corrected. Uh, she played up on the fact it's because you don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. You never wanted to be there instead of, you know, no, you just lost your mother and you didn't have her correcting you. So, yeah, she's playing up on his screw ups. And, and the fact that, yeah, that, that's really what it is. I, don't, I shouldn't have to keep repeating myself. I'm really bad at repeating myself, sorry. <laughs> I always want to drive a point home. I do it all the time at home too, trust me. <laughs> so you get, the, you get it. I shouldn't have to keep saying it. So let's get some more. What else does she say to Harry? What else does she say to Harry to make him insecure? What insecurities does she play on? What other insecurities does she play on? What other insecurities does she play on? What other insecurities? Here we go. Well, that uh, teamwork, the teamwork. She plays, she goes after the teamwork. Uh, she's very cold and mean and nasty to him, as she, have you know. So she, she messes with the teamwork and, and acting like she's, she's got more information. She knows more than them. She's more confident than them, and she's nasty and mean, and that she has all the answers. 
You guys don't know what you're doing. I am his best teamwork and not you. So she wants to remove any teamwork because you've got to isolate your target. you got to isolate them so they see you as the authority figure. She uses her anger to control him at the same time while appearing confident and telling him, I have all the answers. I am victorious. I am your crown of hope. I am your only crown of hope. Your only answer. Back to total narcissism here. And you have a poverty mindset, Harry. And I have all the creative news and I have the ability to start things. I have the ability to start everything because you are always healing from a rock bottom. Which is interesting that to see this because uh, Chelsea always said that Harry was always in recovery mood, mode from, from a rock bottom. He was always, always hitting a rock bottom and recovering and hitting a rock bottom and recovering. So he has a very mental instability and she was constantly emotionally having to pick him up. And so Megan, she, <clears throat> that woman saw that trait in him as well because of this card here. And so she's like, well, I can pick you up. I have the creative ability. I have the spark enthusiasm to do it. You need me. You are a poverty mindset because you lost your mother. You need me to be your queen. She is a nasty mean. She's not like his mother. She doesn't do it with grace, love, and dignity. She does it with control factor of anger and an icy coldness while appearing confident in front of the world. But that's behind closed doors. No one else is going to see it but Harry and people that work for him. And I am your only teamwork and I have all the answers and, and the crown of hope here for you. So yeah, she's just, this is how she's playing him. And I am going to get us to make some quick results here. Uh, it is the, you know, the nine of cups in reverse is looking for greed, quick results. I can get it and I can get it fast. Just follow me. Just follow me. So she acts like she is his savior. I am your savior and you just have to stay with me. Just stay with me. It's going to, it's going to be fine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much on point. I would say, if I say so myself, here we go. Let's get some under the roses, under the roses, get some energy of under the roses. Here we go. More energy of under the roses between the two of them. And we got to get lucky, the lucky clover, and because of the child. We don't have the child. We're waiting on one. And then we've got under the surface, we cannot leave. Ship in reverse. We're not going anywhere. You're staying here with me. Even though we haven't gotten lucky in the child department either, you're not going anywhere. It's not a good time to leave. It's never going to be a good time to leave. You're trapped with me now. You're never leaving me, Harry. Uh, let's get some, another one. Yeah. You're staying in the house with me. You're my prisoner now. I got you now, Harry. You're never leaving this house. Yeah. A total isolation. I isolate your victim, isolate your target. She succeeded very well. She's, she's, she's done a fabulous job of, of pulling out all the stops of what they do in the game playing. It's a total game to them. It's an a hundred percent, a game with someone else's psyche, with someone else's emotions. Uh, their whole psychological makeup alters and changes when you're married to them, when you date them. They will turn your life upside down, and this is exactly what he's done. He is not allowed to leave. You are mine. She has claimed ownership. Uh, and even after a divorce, she will still feel like, you are mine. I own you. Uh, ask anyone who's, been, who's divorced a narcissist. They will tell you that. It doesn't matter if you're divorced and if you have to co-parent. It's going to be very difficult. Um, because you're, they're going to always make life a living hell if they can do it because they get off on it. It's fun. It's sadism. They enjoy it. So yeah, you're my slave. You're not going anywhere. You're mine. I claimed you. <laughs> Even though she wants to do whatever she wants, I do what I want. Yeah, you can go diddle this. I can diddle that. But bottom line is this is where we sit. You are not leaving me. You are not leaving me. You're staying here in Montecito with me. Despite the fact we don't really have a kid that we gave birth to and we're going to look like, try and pose to everyone that we look like we are the lucky people. We are lucky that we escaped. We are lucky we have each other. We have the best life. And that is the illusion. Actually, the illusion is this <laughs> right here, uh, the child in the upright. So yeah, hmm. fun stuff, fun stuff. 
And let's find out how is William feeling these days. I might as well hit it up, right? Let's find out how is William feeling today? How is William feeling today? How hopeful is he feeling? It is rumored that Charles actually is hopeful to bring them back as working royals, which is not a good idea. It's, I don't know how true it is. I should probably throw some cards on that. <laughs> but that is what I heard from another channel. So don't know how true that is. Here we go. So hmm, maybe I will switch it up. Charles. I'm going to do Charles. Yeah, to heck with it. Charles. Charles, Charles, Charles. Charles, how are you feeling? Charles, do you want them back as working royals? That's not very, that's not a very king attitude. That's why nobody really wants him if he's going to do that. That would really open the doors, a can of worms, for a really huge problem. So does Charles actually think he can get them back and want them back? Does he actually want them back? Does he actually want them back? There we go. Oh, we've got rock bottom. we got a, a insomnia card here. The nine, it's coming to a climax. Fulfillment is, you know, not quite there. Uh, is very unhappy. Sharp words being exchanged and unhappy with the family. Yes. And we have here, he's not, he's feeling pretty weak. Wow, he's in a bad place. And he doesn't want, he doesn't want her though. He doesn't want her. He doesn't want the unpregnant woman. Yeah, he does not want to team, team up with her. I would say he just wants Harry. Harry back, but not her. And I've said this before. Yeah, Harry would be victorious to have back. He wants Harry back. And he feels that he's close uh, with the three. He's trying to create the situation under the surface, but Harry's not going for it right now. The Knight of Swords. Harry's not going to do it right now. He's just not at that point right now because he's too busy being nasty. And in the center, we have here, yeah. He is not in the mood to do it. He's not willing to do it right now. Not going to do it. He's not feeling loving, kind feelings towards the family. Uh, the brainwashing has done, done well on his brain, and he's not going to communicate any, uh, any, any, anything positive right now. It's just very negative communication right now, and no, no positive emotions, no positive words or emotions going on right now between the two of them. It's all negative, very negative. Um, but Charles is hopeful to get him back, but not Megan, not that woman. So, yeah, um, number six. Number six, uh, if he did go back, uh, it's just, wow, it's, what a nasty thing that would be. Let's get some more cards on number six. Let's get some more cards on number six. Here we go. Well, Daddy's concerned. <laughs> number six, about the occupation. Well, there is concern about the working, the lovers. Lots of messages going back and forth. Sudden wealth in reverse, marriage in reverse, coffin in reverse, and mature woman in reverse. Um, so I would say, what does this tell me? Um, there's concerns, obviously, always at overwork, getting it, looking like they're still lovers. People are getting the messages probably that they really aren't in love, that they're on um, troubled waters there. Uh, they are getting the message. I would say uh, Charles knows that it's a very, very unhappy marriage, uh, that they're trying to attain the sudden wealth, not happening, inability to change. It is close to a divorce. You know, it's just waiting it out and uh, the mature woman in reverse. And, he, and I would say that is Queen Elizabeth's passing uh, would be something on the family's mind is she's next. She's next in line to go to the other side. So he's thinking about, wow, you know, my mom's going to pass. Uh, his grandmother's going to pass. You know, I've got this concern still lingering. I think he's hoping that it can be resolved prior to her passing. Uh, he wants this resolved prior to her passing so she doesn't have to go to the other side knowing that Harry's out there um, trashing the family. He wants to resolve it. He wants to resolve it very badly. So that is my final say on that. I do, do think he does want to make it right. Um, but Harry's just not ready yet. He's got that, that, um, you know, that night energy in reverse that just do it in reverse and emotions and, and words are very nasty right now and they are not positive and it is not building. It is not, um, bridging any gaps right now, as we can see for, from his tirade. Hope you enjoyed this until next time. Like, and subscribe. Bye.